This data, already in the form of a contingency table, shows the number of people, either female or male, who have shown different degrees of improvement following uh, bacteriophage treatment, either no improvement, some good or excellent improvement. With Minitab, we are able to perform the chi-squared analysis directly from summarized data in a contingency table of this form. So we go to stats, tables, chi-squared test for a two-way table already in the worksheet, and we have to identify the columns relating to the uh, contingency table. So this is C2 to C5, and we can select or double click, and then we just run the chi-squared analysis. And the result will appear in the session window, which represents the contingency table with the observed values again for the different categories of female and male. And for each cell, it gives the observed value, the calculated expected value, and the contribution to the chi-squared value in each case. Then adding up all of the contributions to the chi-squared value, we get the total chi-squared value. The degrees of freedom, 3, is equal to the product of the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. And then it gives the calculated p-value, 0.135, which for these particular categories shows that there is no significant association between the degree of improvement and the gender of the patient. The data here shows the yes-no answers to two questions Q1 and Q2 from a forensic questionnaire. These are the answers given by a total of 66 respondents who are divided into two groups, G1 and G2. But initially we will ignore the division into these two groups and treat this as just one data set. We will use this data to illustrate Minitab's use of cross-tabulation to obtain the contingency table and chi-squared statistics. So we go to Stat, Tables, Cross-tabulation and Chi-squared, and we will define the contingency table by putting Q1 to define the rows and the answers to Q2 to define the columns. If we click on chi-square here, we will request the display of the expected cell counts in the contingency table. And under other statistics, we can select Fisher's exact test, which is appropriate for our 2x2 two two table, and the various other methods of association, Kramer's V, Kappa, Lambda, Tau, and measures of concordance and correlation. We press OK and we run the analysis OK. The results appear in the session window and we see first of all the contingency table defined by the answers Q1 for the rows and Q2 for the columns. In each particular cell we can see the observed value for example 24 people answered no to both Q1 and Q2 and we can also see the calculated expected value, in this case 20.2. The calculation then gives the chi-squared value and the degrees of freedom 1 for a 2x2 two two table and the calculated p-value of 0 0.049. It also calculates the likelihood ratio chi-squared p-value of 0 0.047. At first instance this appears that this is giving a significant association between Q1 and Q2, but we must bear in mind that this is only a 2x2 two two table, and in this case the direct p-value is somewhat unreliable, and we should either use Yates correction, which is not calculated here, but we can go down and see Fisher's exact test, which gives a p-value of 0 0.070 to three significant figures, and this is a non-significant result. So the safest conclusion for this table is that there is no significant association between Q1 and Q2 for the overall data set.
The calculations also give Kramer's V, but for Minitab this is given as Kramer's V squared of 0.059 for three significant figures. It also gives values for kappa and the correlation coefficients of Pearson's R and Spearman's rho. We also have the calculations uh, for lambda for the two dependencies of either Q1 and Q2. And for measures of concordance, we have Selma's D for both Q1 and Q2 dependent, and also the values of gamma and Kendall's tau B. We can now analyze this data set further by considering the two groups independently. So we can go to stats, tables, cross tabulation and chi squared again, and this time we will identify the group as being two layers within the analysis. And we will run the analysis. And we can see that Minitab has first of all calculated the analysis for group G1, which identifies a total of 36 respondents and gives a Pearson's chi-squared value, which is not significant, of 0 0.102. And Fisher's exact test with a p-value, again not significant, of 0 0.219. Minitab doesn't perform McNamara's test, which would pick up, in this case, a significant difference between the off-diagonal elements of this two-dimensional contingency table, in that we see that in group 1, 16 people who replied no to question 1 then replied yes to question Q2, whereas only one person changed their minds in the opposite direction, changing from yes to Q1 to no to Q2. So there is a significant difference in these off-diagonal elements, but this does not appear in the Pearson's p-value or the Fisher's exact test. If we then look at the results for group 2, uh, there are 30 participants in group 2, giving a Pearson's chi-squared value of 0 0.029, which appears to be significant, but because it is a, just a 2 by 2 table, we should either use the Yates continuity correction, which we don't have, or Fisher's exact test result of 0 0.057 for three significant figures, which is just outside the significance criteria, so it would be safer to assume that we do not have, in this case, a significant association between Q1 and Q2, even for group G2.